Hello everyone, it's Tracy. Welcome back to my channel. Thanks very much for joining me. Today I'm doing the assembly tutorial for the sequin storage tray. This project has been designed by Nicole Silhouette here on YouTube and I shall link her YouTube channel in the description box below. For those of you that have electronic cutting machines, this project is available as a digital cutting file and that is available from Nicole's Etsy store. It is also available as a cutting die set and you can get that from Andy's store, also known as RLJ Lives. And I shall link both Nicole's Etsy store and Andy's store in the description box below. So first up, I'm going to show you the practice one that I made. And this is all just in one colour of cardstock, which is the marble in Kaisercraft. These are the little sequin storage boxes and they have a tab on the front, like so. And I like to tuck that in until I get the magnets on that will keep them closed. And the little magnets I use are these little tiny ones. They're about 3 sixteenths of an inch, I think. And there's eight of those little sequin storage boxes and they go in this tray stand. So this is what it looks like from all angles. And it's quite sturdy and strong. And then we put the little boxes back on. And they fit nicely in the tray and then the top goes on. This is the top and then that goes in that center octagon there. And it's a lovely sequin storage tray. So I'm going to be using glue for this tutorial today and I use the art glitter glue and I put it into these smaller tubes that you can get on AliExpress. So let's get started and we'll make the sequin boxes first. And I'm going to cut the main piece of the sequin box from designer series paper directly. You also need that little piece there and these two pieces here. And that is to make one sequin box. So what I'm doing here is I'm folding along the score lines of these pieces. And once we've got all these score lines folded, we can then start putting the sequin box together. So we're going to take these two side pieces and the way you do it, you have the three tabs facing the back of the box, which I've got that orientation showing you here. And the straight edge will be along the front. So we're going to join them together like so. And I'm going to put glue onto the glue tab. And I'm just spreading it along with my finger and they'll wipe my finger on a wet wipe beside me. And do the same on the other side. pressing it into place. This side I actually put on a bit crooked so I'm going to just take it off and reapply the glue and try again. You do need to be a little bit precise when you're putting this together otherwise your sequin box won't look good and it won't fit into the tray. So then I'm going to put glue along the larger glue tab and this joins up the base of the sequin box to the side. And I'm just pressing that into place and I'm going to do the other side and you can sort of start start to see that this is now taking shape so we've got it looking like this and then that tab will fold up so I'll put glue on those two glue tabs and press the front into place they're very easy boxes to put together. So I'm just pressing those two side tabs in place, making sure that the glue is getting a good hold. And I've noticed here that I've had to apply some more glue. And just making sure that that takes a good hold. And then that's our sequin box. Those other two tabs there, they just fold down and then the box shuts like so and you've got this tab here at the front. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to get that other smaller piece and fold along the score line. And it has a side with straight angles and a side with curves. And we're going to put glue along the straight angle side and put it into place just below the score line to where that tab that folds down starts. 
and then that helps the lid to slide down nicely into place. Now until I get my magnets in place I like to just fold that tab inside the box. So you'll go ahead and you'll make another seven of these in the exact same way so that you have eight and you can see that I've just got my tabs tucked in. I just don't want anything happening to the tabs because I've actually used a fairly thin designer series paper to make these sequin boxes and so I don't want them to tear. So now we'll move on to the tray that holds the sequin boxes. And the pieces you need for that is this large octagon and these two decorative strips here. They have a scalloped edge. There are two sizes of these in the cutting file and also probably the die set. You want the larger set to do this part. So I'm just folding along the score lines and I'm going to attach this decorative edge to the octagon but on the bottom side of it because it's going to make our edge that holds our sequin boxes in place. And I'll just show you that. So it's going to attach like so. And then when we put our sequin box in into it, it will be the edge that holds it in. And I want those tabs on the bottom. Like so. Because I don't want to see those tabs on the top. So I'm going to go ahead and put glue on the tabs. And attach it to the octagon. Making sure that the tabs are on the underneath side. And you'll need to take care here to line up to make sure that each part of that matches up with the sides of the octagon. So you can see that those tabs are attaching to the underneath side. So take your time, make sure you're lining everything up nicely. So if these tabs were on the top instead of underneath like we're doing, it would make the area smaller for those sequin boxes and they would be a tighter fit and you don't want that. So that's one side done and I'll just get the other side. And I'm leaving those little tabs that join, I'm just leaving those for the time being, I'll join it together a bit later. So just taking care, making sure it all lines up nicely and pressing it into place so the glue can get a good hold. And now once that's all in place like so, then I will um, attach the smaller tabs and put them in place. It does take longer to put these projects together when you are solely using glue because you need to hold things in place until the glue dries and it gets a good hold. But it would have taken a lot of double sided tape for this project and at the moment my double sided tape supply is running rather low. So I'm looking forward to be able to order some more soon. So I'm just holding that in place making sure all these tabs are glued down nicely and pressing down firmly and then we can put our sequin boxes in place and you'll see when you put all your sequin boxes in they all fit into this tray perfectly not too tight and not too loose just perfect So it looks like so. So we'll put this piece aside for now and we'll move on to the next part of the tutorial and that is the lid. So for the lid there are a lot of pieces and I've actually cut some of the pieces out twice so that I could decide what colour I wanted. These are the decorator layers that go around 
the lid, the main part of the lid. And I've cut them from purple and I've um, embossed it with an embossing folder. These pieces here that I'm sorting out now, I've cut them once out of white and once out of the purple colour because I haven't decided yet what I'm going to actually use. So I'm just sorting myself out here. And these are the pieces that make the finial top. So I'm just waiting to see what colour is going to look better. So I'm just going to push them to the side for the moment and I'll get back onto that in a minute. But we can now work on other parts of the lid. So we've got this long piece here and I'm just going to fold along the score lines. Then we have this octagon with the, the middle missing. And then we have these eight pieces here. And these are going to make up the main part of the lid. So I'm going to go ahead and fold along all the score lines on all of those pieces. Because we'll work on these next. So folding along all the score lines on all those eight shapes. So now we've got all that done, it's now time to glue this piece together. And the way I like to do this is just one tab at a time and I start at the top, making sure that they line up together perfectly and I just lift it up out of the way to do the next tab and then put it back down, making sure it's lined up perfectly. You really do need to make sure that you take your time with this particular part making sure that those edges are lined up perfectly otherwise this piece won't fit together nicely and it will look wonky. So just working one tab at a time making sure the edges line up. For all the eight pieces. So I've sped this up super fast whilst I glue them all together. So that's half of it done. Now we'll work on the other half. Just gluing and taking your time, putting those tabs in place. And each time I put the glue down, when I'm wiping it, I'm trying to get it to cover the whole of the glue tab so that it gets good coverage. And then I wipe it off on a wet one that I've got beside me. And this is the last piece that we're putting in place. And then we'll join it together in exactly the same way. join those bottom two tabs it was just easier for me to go in from the inside as the shape has already started taking shape here and you can see that's part of our lid almost finished so I've decided with this octagon even though I did cut one out of purple that I'm going to put a white one on and that will get glued onto the glue tabs that are around that smaller center hole so I'm just going to go ahead and put glue on those tabs Make sure it gets good coverage and then glue that octagon into place. I'll turn it over and press it from behind to make sure that it's getting a good hold. And that's that part of our lid done. Next we'll move on to this long strip and the octagon with the centre missing. I'm going to put glue on that end glue tab and join this together. Just holding it in place till the glue dries. And then that octagon with the center missing will go over the top 
it's a very snug fit and you may have to push the pieces in like I'm doing now to get it over the top and then you can push it back out it's a very snug fit and then I'm pushing the glue tabs so I push that back into place it just snaps in it's fine and then those tabs will get glue applied to them and then they'll be pressed down onto that octagon shape and I just like to do one glue tab at a time so I'll work my way around applying glue to one glue tab at a time and pressing it down onto the octagon shape again I'll say it just take your time make sure you get good coverage with the glue and press it down into place the more precise you can be the better your project will turn out and if you're making something like this it is going to take time it's not a five minute job so if you're going to commit to something that takes this long then you know that it's going to pay off when you, your project looks as good as it can and the pieces also fit together better the more precise you can be so I'm just going around with my bone folder here and I'm just burnishing where those tabs were glued on the other side so this is the top side I'm just pressing it down to make sure it's all in place and this piece is going to be attached to the other piece we just made like so so what I like to do is put glue on one tab to begin with get that into place and it will fit perfectly onto one of those tabs just pressing it to make sure the glue gets a good hold and then once that tabs in place you can put then put glue on these other tabs so I'm putting glue along all the other tabs and the good thing about this being an octagon shape you can maneuver the piece as you're attaching it down and you'll see me do that so that it gets into position properly so I'm just taking my time here making sure various parts of it are getting a good hold with the glue before moving on and I'm using both my hands here to keep it all in shape just pressing it down if it pops out you just push it back in whilst the glue is still wet and that's that attached so our lids coming together and I'm just testing to make sure it's going to fit nicely in that octagon space around the sequin boxes and that's looking good so I've got my other pieces here so I've got the white octagons here with the centers missing and there's six of those and I'm going to glue five of them one on top of each other and you just need to be careful here because the center needs to match up with the edges so I'm just gluing five of them together and I'll leave one to the side and you can see I went ahead and chose the purple for the finial parts as well and I'll leave the other pieces for another time for another project the ones that I cut in white so I'm just gluing the last octagon piece to that stack so we've got five here glued together and we'll leave the sixth one for now and now it's time to get this funny looking jaggedy piece which is part of the finial and glue the end tab to the other side and now we'll take the other funny round piece that looks like a pie with a piece missing and we'll put glue on that one's glue tab and join that together and that makes a cone shape And I've embossed these purple pieces with a Swiss dots embossing folder. So now I'm going to apply glue to the larger tabs of that jaggedy piece that we joined. 
and also put glue on the inside of the cone shape just for good measure and I'm going to join the two together working with my fingers on the inside pressing against my fingers on the outside to get the glue to take hold and it is a little bit more trickier when you've used a paper that has been embossed because you're working with the embossing as well so that may take a little bit longer for that glue to set up then I'm going to fold those bottom glue tabs out of the way so that I can get in and really press that glue into place from the inside Then I'm going to take that sixth octagon with the centre missing and push that finial piece through the middle of it so that the tabs come through on the other side. Again that's a very snug fit. So once the tabs are through on the other side I'm going to glue them down. And you may need to finagle it a little bit like I'm doing here to make sure those tabs are coming through evenly. So I'm just applying glue to one tab at a time and then pressing it down into place against that bottom edge of that octagon. So I'm just going around applying glue to those tabs and pressing them down against the octagon. Then I'll take my bone folder and I'll press down so that that glue gets a good hold. Once that's done I'm going to put glue around the whole edge of that octagon piece over the tabs and everything and those other five that we stacked together is going to get positioned over the top of that and that gives that finial piece some strength and it makes a nice base for it to be attached to the other part that's to the top of the screen there like so but before we stick that down into place we need to stick these decorative layers on and they will go in place like so. So I'm going to apply glue over the whole piece and put it into place around that base of the lid. You could just put glue at the top and the bottom if you'd like and only having it attached there it will give it a more rounded shape but I decided to put glue on the whole decorative layer so that it had contact with all parts of it and I was happy with the overall shape with how the lid looked with the decorative panels glued on like that so I'm just working my way around gluing down all those decorative layer panels these decorative layer panels that I'm putting on here and ones that we will do later for the base which is similar shape to this are the only decorative layer panels that are included in the cutting file and the, probably the die set because the pieces for this project mostly can be cut from designer series paper directly. So if you're cutting directly from designer series paper there's no need for decorative layers. So for my project today for this whole sequin box the main parts I've cut from white cardstock the sequin boxes I cut directly from designer series paper and these decorative layers here that I'm putting on this lid and will also be putting on the base piece I've cut from this purple cardstock and I embossed it with an embossing folder to make it like designer series paper. The finial I've cut from purple cardstock as well and put it through my embossing folder but that could have easily have been cut from designer series paper. It's entirely up to you. So now it's time to glue this finial piece onto the top of the lid and I'm going to put it into position, go in from the inside and press against my right hand with my left hand so that this finial gets a good hold and gets glued into position. And that's our lid coming together nicely. Also included in the cutting file and probably the die set will be this decorative piece that can be put over those joins of the decorative layers but I've decided not to use those, I'm going to use pearls. So the lid fits onto the top of the sequin tray like so and it's a nice fit 
And that's our top and our sequin box is done and it's time to put that aside and work on the next piece which is the base stand. So these are the pieces for the base stand. We've got this octagon or two octagons with holes in the centre. One is smaller than the other. There's these, another two of these purple decorative strips. There's this smaller octagon. Another eight of these pieces with the decorative layers. There's eight rectangles here and also this piece here which I'm going to fold along all the score lines now because we'll put this piece together now. So once we've got all these score lines folded, we're going to actually be putting in some reinforcing of this piece. It's the actual stem of the stand. So it needs to have some strength and that's where these eight rectangles come into play. And we're going to glue them on the inside of that main piece in between the score lines. And that's going to add strength for the stand. So I'm just gluing these into place. One at a time, taking care to make sure that they're lined up nicely in between the score lines. Make sure they don't go over the score lines or your pieces won't fold nicely. Oh, then I realized I missed one. So I'll just get that glued into place. Then we'll go ahead and put glue along that end tab and close this up. Pressing down firmly so that, of course, the glue gets a good hold. Give it a bit of a burnish. And that's our stand stem. So I'll just put that aside for the time being. And we'll work on these pieces here. These are like the ones before. They're exactly the same size. And I'm going to go ahead and fold along all the score lines like I did before. And this will be put together in exactly the same way. And this is going to make the base of the stand and that centre stem is going to go through the middle. So this is put together the same way, one tab at a time, so that the edges line up perfectly. Making sure you've got good glue coverage. And try and be as precise as you can. So I do speed this up a little bit so that you're not watching this all again as you have watched it before. But by all means, if you don't want to watch it, you can just fast forward it. But I'll leave it in in case somebody needs it. So while this is getting put together, I hope you're all keeping safe at the moment. Things are crazy in the world right now. We've got this new normal that we're trying to get used to. I'm still working, I do work in healthcare, so I'm working a few days a week out and about delivering products to various hospitals. And it's fairly full on. And my job's a driving job, so usually at the end of the day I'm very tired when I get back home. And every hospital I go to, I get my temperature checked and get asked a million questions if I've been overseas or if I've been in touch with someone that is infected and ask, they always ask me if I'm feeling well so that's every hospital I go into whenever I'm working but uh, hopefully we'll, there'll be light at the end of the tunnel in a hopefully sooner rather than later but I'm hoping that you're all hanging in there and being as crafty as you can be. So we're just closing up this shape, the base of the stand. And you can see it's exactly the same as the lid. And we're going to take the stem that we just made before. And that's going to fit in that center smaller hole. And this is a very snug fit and you will need to bend in two of the sides like we did with that other shape to get it to go through the hole and then what you do is you push it down to onto your work surface so that it's even and I'm going to fold back those glue tabs 
that are on the bottom and I'm holding it in place with my left hand between my fingers as you can see to keep it lined up then I'm going to reach in and do the tabs that are pushed in around that middle center circle of the base trying to keep it flat and straight all at the same time I'm just going in with my glue to put on the side of the tabs there that are against that center stem and this does get out of alignment for me I haven't really worked out a better way to do this or an easier way to explain it but you've got to keep that center pole straight and it needs to attach to those glue tabs that are around that hole of the base so I'm just pushing them into place with my pokey tool and because the glue is still wet I can then just push it back down against my work surface so if it did get out of alignment it can go back into alignment once once you're doing this part before the glue completely dries that's why sometimes working with glue is better than double sided tape because you've got that wriggle room so I'm happy with that and that's where this small octagon will go into place so I'm just going to put glue on those glue tabs of that center pole yeah poles a better word to use than stem stems what you have on a flower so I, as again I like to do one tab to begin with get that glue down and then go ahead and put glue on all the other tabs working quickly so the glue doesn't dry and close this base piece up just making sure the glue's got good coverage and again being an octagon shape you've got a little bit more wriggle to get all the pieces into place properly before the glue dries up using both hands to keep it all in place as you're pressing down making sure the glue gets a good hold and even standing it up on its end like this on my work surface is helping so I like to share tips as much as I can if what helps me I like to share that so this is our base taking shape nicely just making sure that center pole there is getting a good hold onto that base piece and then I'm going to put the decorative layers on so I've just got my glue and I'm going to glue those decorative layers in place around the base in exactly the same way that we did for the lid because I want my base and my lid of my sequin box stand to match so just take your time making sure it's going into place nicely and you will have those gaps in between and that's where you can use the other decorative layer piece that is in the die set and also the cutting file but as I said I'm going to put pearls on mine you could put ribbon you could put anything at the end of the day the project is yours you decorate it how you like so I'm just working my way around the base piece here putting these decorative layers into place making sure they're all getting a good hold and I found I did have to trim the very top tip of these decorative layers so that it would fit but only on the base I didn't have to do it on the lid so nearly done just getting the last piece about to go on and we can do the next part of the base so we've got that into position that's the last piece and we'll move on to the next part of the tutorial which is using these two octagon shapes with the centers missing there those small holes and we're going to use the larger piece not the smaller one that's a layering piece and we're also going to use these other two strips with the scalloped edge and they'll be attached to the octagon like so 
So I'm put some glue along those glue tabs and we'll put the tabs in place like so. Working our way around, making sure that the sides of the octagon match up nicely with those pieces that you're joining, those decorative edges. So take your time, make sure it's all even. So mine come apart a little bit, so I'm just pressing that back into place. And get the other piece, fold along the score lines and put that into place in exactly the same way. Don't join the little tabs on yet. I do that at the end. It's just so that if you need to have some wriggle room, you've got it. So at the moment, the scallops are pointing up towards the camera and I'm gluing that tab and putting it underneath the octagon shape. Once I've got that last bit into place, press it all the way around and then I can get these tabs, these smaller tabs and can join them. A little bit of glue and hold it in place. And that's one side and then I'll go over and do the other side. Put the glue on the little tab and just press it into place. And the smaller piece will be layered over the top like so and that covers those purple tabs of that decorative layer that we put around. So I go ahead here and I start to put glue onto this layering piece. And then I realize, oh, this has actually got to be attached to the center pole. So that piece with the decorative layer, the decorative scalloped edge, sorry, just gets positioned over the top of the center pole. The glue tabs get some glue on them and then we fold them out and press them down against that octagon piece and then we press it down firmly give it a bit of a burnish and turn it over making sure that's got good hold and then we can put that layering piece over the top using the center hole there as a guide to line it up and just pressing it into place and that covers those purple tabs that you can see So whatever paper you use for your scalloped edge, you can cover the tabs with this piece. Also gives this base piece or that particular part of the base piece some extra strength. Then we'll take the tray base piece that the sequin holder, the sequin boxes get put into and that's going to get attached to this stand like so. And when I turn it over here, I think, hmm, I'm not going to want to see those purple glue tabs from that decorative scalloped edge. So what I ended up doing was I cut another one of those larger octagons, this piece here. So I cut another one of those and I'm going to glue that into position over the top. So that will hide those purple tabs nicely. And also I thought method to my madness, it will give this tray piece some extra strength. So two for one deal. So just gluing that into position and pressing it down. Makes it look neater too. So that's looking good. Turn over the stand. Just making sure that that's all stuck well. And that will get glued on top like so. So we'll turn it over and we'll do it this way. And that's so that I can ensure that I'm gluing it down straight and that there's an even gap around. So I'm just putting glue all over this stand piece. A lot of glue and make sure it gets right out to the edges. And 
then turn it over and position it on top of the other tray making sure that you're making it central and even and there's a nice even gap all the way around so about a quarter of an inch gap I think all the way around don't press too hard but then you can go around like this with a bit more pressure to make sure that that glue gets a good hold and that's our stand nearly finished so you've got the scallops facing up from the tray and then on the base of the stand there they're pointing down so I'm just going ahead making sure here that this is getting a good hold and that's our stand looking very pretty so this is where we can add our sequin boxes and they go in around like so now bearing in mind my top tabs are tucked in and I've just got them like that at the moment just to keep them protected without them getting torn whilst I'm trying to put this together. And they all fit perfectly in the tray. It's not a tight fit and it's not a loose fit, it's just perfect. And then we can put the lid into that gap in the centre there. And that's our sequin storage tray basically done except for the decorating which I'm going to go ahead and do off camera because I prefer to do it that way I don't like filming myself when I'm decorating so here's my finished sequin storage tray and you can see that I have put pearls around the edges of those decorative layers on the base and the lid for the decorative tabs here on the front of the sequin storage boxes I've put a magnetic closure on each of them and a flower embellishment. Around the top of the finial I've put flowers and also around the pole of the stand. We take the lid off and pick up one of the sequin storage boxes here. The magnetic closure opens and you've got your sequins inside. Just closes down nicely and I love that flower embellishment that I've got just on the front there they were just in my stash I couldn't even tell you where they were from it's very pretty and on the lid you can see that I've got the pearls running down each side of the decorative layers there and I've got flowers around the finial matches in with the base so that's my finished sequin storage tray and look you wouldn't even need to just have sequins in it you could put whatever you wanted in them it would even make a nice mother's day gift with some little gifts in those little boxes lollies or chocolates or little soaps or something like that that would make a really lovely mother's day gift i think and this one's going into my craft room so i'm pretty happy with how it came out and i did it in my favorite colors so that's my tutorial finished for today. I hope you've enjoyed watching and that you feel inspired to make one of these. Don't forget to check the description box down below for the links I've previously mentioned. If you'd like to subscribe to my YouTube channel or follow me on Instagram, I would really love that too. Thanks very much for watching today. Have a great day and until next time, it's bye for now.